Look, you cannot expect to have a healthy relationship with someone when you're mad at the opposite sex, right? When you're mad as a man and you're mad at women for the way they treated you uh, when you were in high school because, you know, you maybe were a lanky kid and, you know, a lot of girls wasn't feeling you or you didn't have a lot of money or you weren't the high school quarterback and a lot of girls they just kind of pushed you to the side, never really took you serious, never gave you the time of the day. And that hurt you. So you have issues with women, but you know, you, you want one thing from them, but you just really don't want a relationship with them. And then when you really do want a relationship with them, you realize that you still have an issue. You still have a heart issue. You still mad at women. Same thing, ladies, you know, you have uh, issues with men. You know, maybe it's the men that you've dated in the past. Maybe it's been daddy. Maybe it's been uh, a, a brother or an uncle. Like you have these issues with men. And yet and still, you kind of want that that uh, that that togetherness with a man. But deep down in your heart, you know that you still have those heart issues. So you can't expect to have a healthy relationship when you're mad at the opposite sex. Look. I remember, I remember growing up, I was overweight as a child. Uh, I grew up in the era in the nineties, I guess I'm dating myself where you had the, the, the dope boys and you had the, uh, the thugs, right? You had these people in this era. I was neither one of them. So growing up in the hood like that, I didn't get a lot of love from the ladies. So I got a lot of rejection growing up as a teenager being overweight and not being, you know, one of the D boys or the thug. So I know what rejection is, is like, I mean, is it painful? Yes. Have, there's been girls that I really, really liked and, you know, they maybe played around with me for a minute and made me think that it was going to be something. And it really wasn't just because they was bored. They just maybe just used me for a little while. Those things happen, but I didn't allow that to hurt me when it came to the opposite sex. I still, I, I love women. Uh, especially black women, right? But I told myself that I would never let that hurt take me to a level where I look at women as less than or you hurt me. So, um, you know, I'm going to dog you out whenever I get to where I need to be in life and use women for whatever. So I didn't want that in my life. And I believe even when I went through a divorce, I never hated my ex-wife. I never, you know, I never talked bad about her. And you know, throughout my videos, if you've seen any of them, I don't talk bad about my ex-wife uh, because I realized there were some issues that I had to, what, what, what does all this have to do with how do you know when you're healing? Let's jump into that because I, I, I find myself rambling. Number three, you find yourself uh, healing when you no longer blame the other person who hurt you. <clears throat> I think that's important. Let that sit for a minute. You no longer blame the person who hurt you. So what that does is, have you ever been on a date before and you ask the person, you know, what was it like in, the, in your last relationship? Why did your last relationship fail? And they just go on this tangent about everything that there's, you know, the person who they were with, their ex done them wrong. She was doing this. She was doing that. Or he was doing this. He was doing that. That's a red flag within itself because believe me, there's nothing you can do to make that person happy because if you decide to date that person and you be with them later on and the relationship doesn't work, they're going to blame you too. So people like that, when you ask that question, run. But how do you know you're healing? You no longer blame that person. You take accountability for your actions. And I'm going to talk about that as well. But you realize that I had some issues too. There were some things that I could have done that could have helped our relationship become uh, more intimate, more stronger. We could have lasted longer if I had done this or if I had done that. So you no longer blame the one who hurt you and you take accountability for your actions. That's one way that you know you are healing. The next one is, of course, like I said, taking accountability for your actions. And remember, we have all played the villain in someone else's story. For some odd reason, we like to think that we are always the victim you know, they, they done us wrong. And I get that to a degree. Did they do something wrong? Probably. Yeah. But you did too. And I talked about that, that you no longer blame them, but taking accountability is everything. Uh, that's almost like a curse word by today's standards is being accountable for your actions, you know, for the demise of the relationship. 
And that's when you can really grow and mature when you take accountability. You can look back and say, I did this. I could have been more mature in this area because self-awareness is everything. I always talk about that. When you have the self-awareness, uh, you grow faster. You mature faster when you take accountability for your actions. But the more you delay that accountability, you're going to spend years in bitterness and resentment and being mad at whoever the person that broke your heart before. You know, so uh, taking accountability that helps you grow, that helps you mature. That that's how you know that you are healing. Number one way you know you are healing is the person who hurt you. You wish them the best. <laughs> you, you don't want vengeance. You're not mad at them. You're like, you know what? I spent way too much time giving all my energy to somebody who left me, right? Because they done moved on with their life. But you on social media tweeting and, and Facebook and talking about how this person hurt you. When are you going to let it go? When? When, when are you going to let it go? Leave a comment below. I would like to know. <laughs> when are you going to let it go? Because like I said before, the sooner you let it go, the faster you can heal. And don't dwell on that stuff. It happened. Take it as a learning experience and how you can grow. I talked about that and uh, having accountability, right? And even having somebody in your corner that can really be honest with you and be like, yeah, yeah, you need to work on that, man. That's, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a struggle, <laughs> you know? And when you allow people to be in your life that can kind of help you through your personal issues, you can really see outside of yourself like, yeah, they got a point. But that comes with accountability. You wish this person the best. You don't want vengeance. You don't want them to... You know, I hope you, you, the next person you with, I hope they do you the way I did, you know, the way you did me. Don't do that. That's how you know you're not healed because you're still wishing ill intent on somebody who done whatever they done to you. Take it as a learning experience. So that's how you know when you're healing is when you no longer take blame uh, for the one. Uh, you no longer blame the one who hurt you. The next one is you take accountability for your actions and the demise of the relationship. And then the, the, the first one is you wish them the best and you don't want any vengeance. Man, I hope this video has helped someone. Make sure you leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your healing process. How did you heal? How did you get over that relationship that you never thought that you would get over or the person you thought you was going to love for a long time and it, it, it never worked out or the person you thought that was going to marry you? Let me know. Make sure you share this video with someone. Visit the website at scarytoremarry.com. This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach. Take care, people.